right, let's look back at our code in the user controller. And this is great that we have a way of injecting a flash message into our views, but what if we want this to be available to all our controllers? Well, Sales makes this really easy to do in what are called policies. And policies are just middleware functions which run before controllers. And then any of these policies can be uh, applied to a given controller or one or more of its actions within the controller. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So first we're going to create a policy, which I've already done here with flash.js. And this code should look very, very familiar. We create a blank object, res.locals.flash. If the rec.session.flash does not exist, then we're just going to return next. If the rec.session.flash does exist, then just like we did in the user controller, we're going to create a copy of it and assign that to reslocals.flash. And once we do that, we're going to clear the rec.session.flash, assign it to a blank object, and then again, give up our control with next. So now we have the policy complete, but how do we apply that to a particular controller or all controllers? In this case, I want it to apply to all controllers. And that's where you just go into config.policies. So the default policy is just a pass through. So all controllers, the policies are true. But I want all controllers, signified by this asterisk, I want all controllers to pass through my new policy called flash. So let's save this file. I'm gonna go in and clean up our controller to take out what we had in there before. We'll save this and let's make sure everything works. I'm gonna restart the server. So we'll refresh the page and now try to create an account. And great, it works as before. When we refresh the page, we're good to go. So now instead of having to put that code in every single controller through a policy, we can do that one time and apply it to all controllers. So most modern apps are gonna take care of the validation, at least sign up validation like this form on the client. And client side validation kind of goes beyond the scope of what I wanted to do in the screencast, but I wanted to include it to show kind of a best practices. This is by no means gonna be a really beautiful validation scheme, but let's look at the code. So I've gone in and included jQuery validate or the jQuery validator, and I created this custom validate file that does some rudimentary validation. Requires the name, requires that there be an email, requires that the email be a valid email, and that the password and confirmation exist, have a password length of six, and that the password and confirmation equal each other. If it does that successfully, it's going to add a class and add some text to the DOM. The other thing that I changed is the grunt file assuring that jQuery validate is loaded second to jQuery and above any other JavaScript. So let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna restart the server. So now if I attempt to create a blank account, I'm gonna get all these warnings. Let me correct them real quickly. and we have our user. So really our sales validations are as a backup if the client side validations fail. In the next screencast, we'll be going over the show action, which will be creating the profile of the user. Thanks for watching.